Hey everyone, how's it going? Five Finger Shuffle back here with another video. And today what I want to do is go over the top 12 artifacts in the game. Uh, the way I'm going to structure this is a little different than the tier list we just did. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I will, at the end of this video, it'll pop up on the screen. You can just click through that. Um, but we did our last video put out a tier list for Epic 7. A lot of people ask about the artifacts. I'm not gonna do a tier list for the artifact. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys my top uh, five star mage artifact, my top four star, and then I'm gonna go through all the other types as well with tanks, warriors, thieves, uh, soul weavers, and rangers. So also at the end of this, we are um, there is some big news regarding select summons so stay tuned until the end of that as a you may want to know what's coming up because it may influence your decision as to who you exchange your units for uh in terms of your mls so stay tuned for that that'll be at the very end um but let's just jump right into this so for mages you can see the uh seven nat five artifacts here my favorite out of all of these is necro and undyne i really like necro, necro and undyne um because it's something that's going to always proc first of all and it's something that uh, it gives you a lot more turns so the basically it's going to give you the 20 percent at max level after a, every aoe attack so especially if you have this on someone like dizzy uh, it is going to help you every single time uh, honorable mention to like abyssal crown and Atticus scepter but those are percent chances uh, to land as well as for the four stars the one that I use all the time on my mages, and the reason for the main part I run mages, is uh, Ancient Book here. So Ancient Book grants you with 20 souls at the beginning of a stage. This is definitely my favorite one. Um, on honorable mentions here, definitely go to Violin. Violin is one of the most popular artifacts in the game right now. Personally, I prefer Ancient Book. Uh, just because it's more PvP central, Violin is, although super prevalent in pvp um and just because it's put on dizzy so that she has a strip on every turn and it is super annoying uh but personally on the offensive side i would prefer ancient book uh, obviously just honorable mention or not honorable mention uh fyi not good on defense it does nothing on defense so layla violin would be better on defense where ancient book would be better on offense moving on to the next class we have the tanks the number one nat 5 artifact for the tanks in my opinion is going to be elbrus ritual sword it's definitely my favorite uh the 10 percent chance or once upgraded 20 percent chance to counter attack when an ally is attacked is really really strong you see this a lot in pvp on basically anything with a provoke so like fallen cecilia c armin uh, all those type tanks that can do something with their skill one because normally you don't focus them first because they're harder to kill you're trying to heal, kill the squishy unit and then while you're trying to do that elbrus ritual sword procs and it counterattacks and provokes the enemy so they can't first of all it does damage but also so they can't attack you again uh, this is a great counter to units like bbk because bbk will hit say go a we hit everybody trying to kill the vildred Say you kill the Vildred, the, the A Vildred the first time, this artifact procs, you get revenge provoked, and your second turn can't attack Vildred, and GG, game over. You cannot do your second attack on Vildred, and then he gets to uh, AoE nuke your entire team. So keep that in mind. Uh, Elbrus Ritual Sword, really strong. The four star artifact for tanks is going to be what everybody thinks it's going to be, and that's Aureus. Aureus is huge. Aureus has the uh, increasing defense of all allies by 10% and takes 20% of the damage suffered by them. Um, a level 30 Aureus is crazy strong. I know a lot of people, myself included, actually keep two of these. The second one being purely because I don't want one that's maxed because it could end up killing the tank I put it on. That's how much damage this can absorb. Um, but if you have a really strong tank, and it's something that you're using for arena you want that level 30 aureus and it will make a huge difference in the amount of damage your team takes all right back to the top next up we have warriors so warrior artifacts are very interesting i feel like they're very strong but not a lot of people use a lot of warriors um i think 
it's kind of a toss-up depending on how you want to use it um i have three i guess four that i really like scythe durandal tooth and creation are my favorites um if i have to pick one though um i would probably use scythe just because it gives you a little more self-sustain and a lot of warriors you want to put lifesteal on um if you don't have a counter set on them so Scythe is really good for helping maintaining your HP. I use this a lot on Yufin, a lot on Ken. Um, really strong artifact. For some other units that you don't necessarily get as much lifesteal from, you may want to consider Creation and Destruction, though. So honorable mention to that. Uh, it is a relatively new artifact, and I think a lot of people aren't using it. Uh, so I would definitely take a look at that as well, as it can bring your cooldown down to zero. As for four-star warrior artifacts, it's not quite as strong of a selection as the Nat 5 selection. Um, so if I had to pick my favorite, I'm actually going to go a completely different direction. Go to Strat Gauntlet. Uh, if you're running a Kitty Clarissa, this is the only artifact you should have on her. It's really strong, increases her resistance. You can get her up to over 200 resistance, which if for your cleanser is amazing, especially if you run into an ML Ball. Uh, he can't strip sleep you. Even if you're on like if you're on immunity, I can't remember the last time I had a debuff landed on my Kitty Clarissa, and that includes from Dizzy even after she's been stripped. So if she has no immunity and Dizzy say gets a second turn, um, Dizzy will not even land a single debuff, even though she doesn't even have to crit or anything. So being able to avoid all debuffs is a very nice thing for Kitty Clarissa, and this artifact is my favorite. Um, really nice there, and I think another one that's really been overlooked. All right, up next for the Thiefs, this one's an easy one, RNL. Everybody loves RNL. It has the best artwork, I think, of any of the artifacts in the game. I was super excited when I pulled this the first time. I now have a level 30 RNL, and I have two level 15 RNLs, and I have them all equipped. Uh, I really like it. The 20% chance to be granted an extra turn at the end of the turn is fantastic. So uh, we're gonna get to the four star version in a minute. But this actually allows you to proc from your skill 3 into your skill 1, or your skill 1 into your skill 3. Um, the, it's a full extra turn, and also helps reduce your cooldown, which is also fantastic. I love it. It is my favorite. If we move over to the 4 stars, again, pretty easy decision, and another artifact along the same light is Dust Devil. Dust Devil does the same thing, except... It's when you don't kill somebody, it just reprocs skill one. So for somebody like Sid, who can defense break on his first skill, this is amazing because it can defense break on the first turn. It can proc an extra turn at a 30% rate and then nuke into the defense break and basically kill anybody with a skill one. Um, I've one shot like high level Fallen Cecilia's using a Sid skill one because of Dust Devil. So crazy strong. Um, honorable mention in the four star category for the thieves to something that doesn't get used. Well, it does get used a lot, probably too much. Actually, I should take that back. Um, honorable mention to Moonlight Dreamblade, though, uh, despite the fact I hate it, that's why I didn't get my my favorite nod, but it does offer a large amount of evasion. If you're putting it on arena defense, Moonlight Dream Blade is crazy strong. Um, that being said, I wish it wasn't in the game. I don't really agree with the whole evasion mechanic. Um, all right, on to Soul Weavers. So my favorite Soul Weaver artifact, this is a tough one because they're very different, but I'm gonna say uh, Rod of Amaryllis is my favorite with a close second or honorable mention to Idle Shear. Uh, Rod has this mechanic where it heals the ally with the lowest health by 12% when using a non-attack skill, 24% when maxed. So if you put this on, say, Angelica for your Wyvern team, um, it'll just heal your tank even more every time she uses a heal. So it'll have your regular heal plus the extra 24%, essentially healing to full every single time. Rod is crazy strong in terms of a healing artifact. Uh, the honorable mention with Idol's Cheer, also really strong for defenses where you're trying to uh, change the attack bar of your team in order to mess up the opponent. So crazy strong there. And into the four stars, where are we here? 
I have many options. My favorite, well, you don't have many options. There's only three. But my favorite of the options is Wondrous Potion Vial. So the ability to cleanse every single time. And I love the fact that it upgrades to 100% chance to cleanse. Uh, that makes me really happy knowing you're going to cleanse every single time. Uh, it's only one debuff, but that one debuff can be incredibly clutch. So definitely don't sleep on Wondrous Potion Vial if you don't already have one built. And the final category for today is Rangers. My favorite Ranger artifact, uh, in terms of the five stars, is probably one that I don't have. I like Bloodstone is the honorable mention, and even Song of Stars. But this one here could be really good, especially with the new k -Run dungeon out. I would love this for uh, Seaside Velina. It says, when attacking all enemies, is a 100% chance to inflict in additional damage. Additional damage dealt increases proportional to caster's attack. Um, it doesn't say how much additional it additional damage but i would definitely would have liked to get that artifact luckily i got her but i did not get her artifact and that is limited um, so if you don't have it you won't be getting it anytime soon another honorable mention to proof of valor which you can get in the guild shop uh, this is i think going to be really prevalent post c arm and nerf coming down to the four star artifacts the four star artifacts kind of make up for the fact that the five star artifacts aren't as strong um, but my favorite here is definitely Infinity Basket. Infinity Basket is fantastic. Increases allies' chance to dual attack by 14% during the caster's turn, and dual attacks deal an extra 20% damage. Um, so you wouldn't put this on your damage dealer. I would put this on somebody like Izaria, who does damage, but she's more support. She gets a lot of turns. She's normally built fast. Um, because you're constantly proccing extra turns from other people. So you can be proccing turns from your damage dealers. Um, if you, the other way you can go is I really like this artifact on Lydica because I would, if I pair say Izaria and Lydica together, it was kind of torn who I wanted to put this on. I put it on Lydica so that Izaria can pr turn up Isaria can dual attack with her, and Isaria has a dual attack or has a defense break on her skill one, which means you can be dual attacking an extra defense break, which is really nice. Um, and obviously, Lydica is very fast as well and has crazy base speed, which means that she'll be getting a lot of turns, and all those extra turns means more dual attacks. So that's my favorite from the four stars, and that's going to wrap it up in terms of our top 12 artifacts in Epic 7. Uh, I hope this helped you guys out. As you can see, I'm at 92 out of 98 artifacts, so I've used almost all of them. Um, Chatty is not in the game on global server. I don't have that one. Dignus Orb is currently in the rotation now, and I haven't summoned it yet, um, but we'll have to see. Then Otherworldly Machinery is also not in the game. And as I said, I missed Rengar's Special Drink, and Proof of Valor is in the shop. And then down here, the One Year Gratitude artifact that hasn't yet been released. So three of the six I'm missing are actually not even available on our server. Um, so of course, Rengar Special Drink, Proof of Valor, and Dignus Orb. Whoops, that's not Dignus Orb. <laughs> and Dignus Orb are the only ones I'm missing. So one of them I'll unfortunately never be able to get because it was limited, but the other two we will hopefully get eventually in the next couple of weeks, and I'll be able to try them out as well. Um, but hopefully that helped you guys out. So next up, we have some stuff that's going on in the game currently and some news. So first up, I'm not sure how to find this even. Notices and events. That's weird that it's not in here. But the login event is live, just so you guys know. There's a login event for the first anniversary. You can see here, I got my 365 energy. Um, I'm not sure how to find that. I can just show you what you guys get, but make sure you log in at least once a day. Uh, make sure you collect your stuff because there's some really good rewards in here. I will bring it up really quickly since I didn't make another video on it. content, first anniversary, check-in event. There's also a buff event coming up. 
Uh, that should be live at some point soon. Here's the login event. So you get 365 energy today. Tomorrow you're going to get 365 ancient coins, a million gold, four summons, a Molagora, the first anniversary artifact, and day seven. If you've logged in every single day, you will get a free five star, which is really nice, super generous. Um, I've heard a lot of people complaining about this event. I don't understand why they're giving us all this free stuff and it's free. Like, what did you expect from them? On top of that, you get 10 free summons every day for seven days. So combine everything together and we're getting almost 100 free summons. That's on odds. You're going to get two free five stars out of this event. And people are still complaining. It blows my mind. I don't understand it. Um, but the biggest news for today is that the next Mystic Summon rotation has been posted. Now, we've talked about this a lot. And... I know every single stream, people ask me, what are you going to exchange your Deep Era for? Are you going to exchange your A Vildred? All these things. And I kind of been saying, I want to wait and see what happens with the Mystic Summons because in seven days, the Ravi rotation is ending. And Ravi is one of the top units in Arena Defense right now. And I kind of want her on this account, even though I have her on my baby account. But I wanted to wait and see what the next rotation was because that could end up changing my select summons. Um, if it's something bad, then maybe I would use my mystics. You can see I have 970 mystics saved up. Maybe I would use my mystics on Ravi to see if I get her. Um, but then on the other, the flip side of that, I was like, well, what if it's something really good and I want to summon that? Or what if it happens to be one of the ones that I want to exchange for? Then that changes any, everything. Oops, wrong button. And turns out it's something that I was going to exchange for in Judge Kize. So Judge Kize is the next Mystic Summon uh, for the Nat 5s. So if you are close to your pity, you can almost guaranteed get a Judge Kize if she's one of the ones who you were uh, planning on exchanging for. Which for me, that's what I was planning on doing. Also, Roaming Warrior Leo, I'm sure most of you know about him by now. Uh, he has a bomb mechanic, basically the same as Summoner's War, if you've ever played Summoner's War. Where it installs a bomb and it self-detonates, ignoring defense after two turns. Um, so it can be cleansed, and there are no, currently no detonators in the game. But really cool that that mechanic is now going to be in Epic 7 as well. Uh, and he's going to be a lot of fun. He's going to be our first bomber. I don't know how good he's going to be because if you see him, you can just bring a cleanse. But uh, for arena offense, that could be really strong. Interesting that he's a ranger. I kind of didn't expect that. I guess it makes sense, but it's um, make for interesting artifact choices. I think that new one uh, might be one of the best options, the additional damage. Because he's going to be geared purely on attack. So maybe that would make sense. Uh, we'll have to see if it does affect bomb da damage though. I don't. I honestly don't know. Um, but Judge Kize being in the rotation now. Definitely could change some people's minds. In terms of their ML Nat 5 exchange. So keep that in mind. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, over there you will see. Wait. Yeah. Over there, you'll see the subscribe button and you'll see a link to the tier list. Uh, make sure you click on both for me and we will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching everyone and have a wonderful day. I got to go get ready for stream. So bye for now.